Uh, we've got Maurice Levy talking with two of the superstars from the social platform messaging space. Hello, Maurice. Bonjour. Bonjour. OK. David. And S.Y. Lau from Tencent, WeChat. So we've got WeChat and Messenger sitting down. It's going to be a treat. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. Bonjour. Good morning. Uh, ni hao. Ni hao. Uh, it's uh, a great pleasure for me to uh, be here and to, uh, to moderate the session. Long time that I have not done that, so it's uh, something I like. I, I have seen uh, uh, only part of the previous session, and I have seen that it was uh, uh, absolutely great. We will try to be as good as uh, Michael and his guests have been. Uh, so let me introduce uh, David. He was thinking about changing his name from Marcus to success, because when you look at the, all the history of uh, David, everything that he has done uh, has been transformed in gold. So he is the kind of guy, when you give him a task, when you give him a, a, an opportunity, he is like uh, one of these alchemists transforming lead in gold. And um, it's a real pleasure, David, to have you. Uh, we will discuss a little bit about uh, Messenger. I don't know at all what Messenger is all about, and I'm sure that we will learn a lot from you. And uh, I was hesitating to introduce uh, HYLO. I wanted to do it in Mandarin. I started my Mandarin lesson at midnight in order to be able to make the introduction. Unfortunately, SY, it takes much more than a few minutes to speak Mandarin. So it's a great pleasure. It's not the first time that we are together on the stage. Uh, SY is the vice president of uh, Tencent at the President Online, uh, and uh, our relationship goes back uh, many, many years. More than 10 years ago. Yes, more than 10 years. And the relationship between publicists and Tencent are great, despite uh, SY. So he, he tried every time to stop us, uh, and he has not been able to do it. Uh, we will cover uh, uh, what Tencent is all about, and we will try to create some problem between the guys, because they are too nice to each other. So, welcome on stage. Uh, maybe we start with you, David, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, what Messenger is all about. Well, first, uh, congratulations for organizing such an amazing event in uh, a short few months. It's uh, nothing short of spectacular. Uh, and thank you for having me. So I just want to like, maybe just set the stage quickly on the Messenger product. Um, so Messenger is a messaging product, as its name uh, indicates. But we have got like, almost a billion uh, monthly active users on the product. Uh, in the last 15 months, we've added um, almost half a billion monthly active users and have grown engagement tremendously. Um, and it's basically uh, become the product that you go to to message with your friends, with uh, your loved ones, with your family, uh, but increasingly also with brands, services, um, and uh, different types of companies that you interact with on a, on a daily basis. Um, so that's what Messenger is all about. Okay. That's why. Hi. Hi. Bonjour. Ni hao. Ni hao. Oh, bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Tencent? I'm sure that everyone in the room, and particularly Robin Lee, knows everything about Tencent. But uh, uh, you, you can maybe share with uh, the audience what right. Tencent is all about. Right. Well, uh, again, to begin, I think I'd like to thank Maurice uh, for inviting Tencent to, to this marvelous session. Uh, we had a great treat yesterday when, uh, under Maurice's uh, leadership, we were treated with the presence, and, and there was probably our first uh, French national state luncheon 
with the presidents of France. Uh, it, it was remarkable. It shows your leadership, and it shows that in Chinese, we talk about guan xi, which means relationship. Uh, a man, a stature such as Maurice, that was able to galvanize half the world's leaders uh, from the East and from the West uh, in, in a two-hour session, presenting uh, the latest updates about the digital world uh, to His Excellency the President. I, I thought it was, it was most eye-opening for myself. Um, back to Tencent, I think uh, many people outside China probably would just know Tencent about the WeChat company. Uh, prior to that, I think also a certain segments of our society would know us as the gaming, the largest gaming providers in the world. Uh, today, uh, Tencent, uh, we, are, we are probably about 18 years old today. Uh, we are the, the third or the fourth uh, largest internet company in the world. Uh, Facebook has been uh, always uh, staying a step ahead of us. Facebook is a company that we admire a lot from, from inside China. Uh, in Tencent, uh, two things that really matters to us is that uh, we like to position ourselves as the connector, meaning uh, in the world of uh, Internet Plus today, uh, our ambition is to try to connect people with people, uh, people with content, uh, people with uh, devices, uh, as as the the audience today will be will be uh, share uh, from our discussion today that the world is actually moving towards a very mobile world. Uh, the second thing that uh, Tencent would would uh, persistently trying to uh, help evolve is the world of content. Uh, we could have the best infrastructure in China where maybe about more than, uh, uh, I don't know, it's like uh, 600 or 700, 700 million people online uh, with a great platform such as uh, WeChat, uh, QQ, or Tencent News and Tencent Sports. Uh, but what's important is that we must be able to help uh, uh, governize, uh, curate contents that matters to our audience. So content and connector are the two things that our company in China strive uh, to deliver to our audience in China. Yep. Yep. Great. So I, I guess that you have all taken notes because uh, we will put uh, some question to you right after. Uh, David, how a company can use Messenger? So we opened the Messenger platform about two and a half months ago. And uh, we already have 11,000 bots or chat bots. Uh, that have been built inside of Messenger. So, you know, last week in Cannes, we uh, announced a partnership with American Express, where every time you use your card to pay for something, you get a notification in Messenger that shows you how much you've paid, the merchants, but also augments that information. So let's say you buy a plane ticket, um, you will get the map of the airport and recommendations of restaurants for your destination automatically. Uh, so this is one example. KLM, the airline, uh, is basically now delivering boarding passes and flight updates and provides customer service and messenger. Um, for the NBA final uh, in uh, the uh, US, we have an NBA bot that was delivering the highlights of the games after every big games uh, were, were done. And I could go on and on. So there are lots of experiences that would have taken place inside of an app or on the mobile web that are now taking place inside of Messenger with much less friction and uh, identity that is always present. So you don't need to log in to experiences and identify yourself because it's on the Facebook platform and you have persistent identity at all times. If I listen to you, it's not only a messaging service, it's much broader. In fact, you are replacing a lot of other services through Messenger. Well, I don't know if we're replacing. I think, um, you know, if, so if you look at no, the killing. app world. You are killing other no, services. I, no, I think, Not replacing, just I, killing. I mean, I think that actually the problem is we're not killing something that's not already dead. Okay. So uh, let but, me explain. But they don't know that they are dead. But let me explain. So you're helping them to let know that they are dead. It's not people. It's not companies. It's not its experience. So in other words, all I'm trying to say is that right now on mobile, you have two issues. You have two ways to actually interact with businesses and services. And so you can actually go to a mobile website. And mobile website is a really bad experience. And when I was referring of like dead, it's like the experience. It's, of course, not. 
So if you go to mobile web right now and you want to do something, you have to log in, you have to create an account, and doing all of these things on the mobile web is really, really hard. Agreed. So, and if you want to download apps, there are lots of successful apps out there, uh, but we actually use only a few apps that we have on our home screen that we use all the time, and those are very successful companies. But then for the long tail, it's actually really hard. Like People download fewer and fewer apps. People uh, don't sign up for them, forget about them. Um, and as a result, it's really hard for brands, it's really hard for companies to get engagement with new apps and new experiences on mobile. Um, so what I was referring to is actually the ability we're providing tools now for businesses to actually reach a, a, an audience of almost a billion people uh, and, uh, and provide it in a way which never forces someone to identify or create an account again uh, in context of uh, uh, you know, their last uh, couple of experiences because you never lose context of past interactions with a business. So it's a new tool for businesses that we believe is going to enable a lot of creativity and a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs and large companies alike to develop new channels to serve their customers better. That's why when you listen to David and you look at uh, what you already do, don't you believe that there are al already some of your apps which are a little bit, or services which are a little bit like Messenger? Oh, I wasn't listening to him. I was thinking about what you're going to ask me next. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think... Thank you, that's why. Well, thank you. <laughs> he wanted us to make his front, remember? <laughs> no, I, I said, I, okay, we, we have to make this uh, a little right. bit interesting. So right. I, I will provoke right. her. Right. From time to time, I, well, I got the authorization from your government <laughs> to provoke you. Uh, I, well, I, I where's Robin? Here. <laughs> well, I, I think I think the, the the brilliance or the beauties of internet is actually is such a big open uh, platform, where uh, there's virtually no secrets in in the recipes in that sense. Um, but having said that, what makes companies uh, successful? for the longer run is actually the, the passions of the, the founding team and as well as the, the ability to really governize uh, a top management uh, partners, not just team, partners around surrounding the founding team with a strong philosophy, uh, with a strong passion to really make a difference in the world. So yes, there would be some similarities here and there, but then uh, a lot of time uh, the consumers are actually smarter than we thought. They would be able to see, they'll be able to see through what are the small thingies that really fits them well, uh, that, that which uh, products or apps uh, service provider in today's world uh, uh, actually care for them more than the other, the other uh, so-called uh, providers. So I think consumers are smart in, in the world of uh, internet uh, mobility in that sense. We will come back to mobility, but I would like David to see if I want to use it internally as one of my communication tool within the company, uh, do you believe I can do it? Yes, we, we actually have a product that's called Facebook at Work. That's basically a version, a complete version of Facebook, but for the work environment. And uh, the reason we built that product is because we use it a lot at Facebook every day, whether it's Facebook groups or posts, or even a version of Messenger that's meant for internal enterprise usage. Uh, and we've been very successful with it lately. And uh, so if you want to make that happen, we can definitely do that. OK, we will discuss this. And we'll um, try Mar Maurice, we also have WeChat and we have QQ for Office that are equally ah, uh, very, very okay. helpful. You could like to consider that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So we say competition is working. <laughs> Uh, that's good. Uh, w w one question. In this room, there are people from uh, startups, from uh, uh, corporations. If a corporation wants to advertise and to make a proposal to the consumers through messengers, is it something that we have already some interesting experience and we can do in a way which is very different from uh, the classic advertising? 
Yes, definitely. I mean, we have really good examples, and it, it always leverages the Facebook newsfeed uh, for now. And um, so, a good example is uh, a car manufacturer, BMW, has actually done uh, an M2. M2 is the, their new car that they're trying to sell and push uh, in the US. And so, they've done a combination of newsfeed ads and an experience in Messenger, which is completely automated, uh, which enables you to configure your car. So you go from newsfeed, you're interested in the car, you tap on that button, you get into Messenger, and you have a conversation with a BMW design bot. You configure your car, choose the colors, the options, and then at the end, uh, it takes you to uh, set an, an appointment for a test drive um, at the dealer. Uh, and that's one of the examples of things that are working really well. Uh, in France, Metic has launched uh, a bot, a dating bot, like uh, uh, about two days ago that's doing really, really well. And they've already noticed that it increases their conversion rates to signups to paid subscriptions of Metic uh, by a pretty significant amount as compared with mobile web. So we already have the first two and a half months in, we already have the first uh, success cases and success stories of uh, businesses leveraging Newsfeed plus Messenger as an advertising and conversion solution. You, you mentioned bot. You believe that everyone knows what bot is all about? Probably not yet, but you know, may, we should ask. Don't you maybe, think? Maybe you should answer. <laughs> <laughs> who knows if what a, you can who, explain. Okay, so if you know what a chat bot or a bot is in, in a messaging app, raise your hand. Whoa, 50%. Ah. Maybe a more. A little I more. told you 50. <laughs> 49. Right. So. No, so it's early, right? It's, uh, and actually, I think that the interesting thing about chatbots is I think that in the short term, they've been overhyped. But over the very long run, they're underhyped. And uh, I really believe that. I, but like, you know, when the web started, the first websites were really bad. And when the first apps were enabled, they were really bad. Uh, and this is no exception. The first couple of experiences that were launched on the Messenger platform were not that great. Uh, but right now, we're starting to see two and a half months in really good experiences with solid engagements that is driving real results for brands and companies. So things are happening. Uh, SY, yes. ca can we say a few words about uh, the new trends on mobile uh, communication for Tencent? Well, um, the 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 numbers does tell the stories. If if we were to yesterday, in fact, when we were we were having a this uh, uh, audience with the French president, when we compare about the the French dream and the China dream, in fact, uh, uh, president of France actually enunciated the French uh, dream about three four years ago, and the entire idea was actually based on the the concepts of uh, liberations, French Revolution, and all that. And if, if you were to take that idea back into the world of internet, the, 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 the world of internet today with mobility coming through, with connectivity uh, paving the way as the next biggest things built on mobility, uh, every single audience uh, in the world, in China in that, in, in that matter, uh, are given the, the liberty to, to, to exercise their wisdom with regards to consumer behavior. So mobile in the world, a market like China, uh, has that very strong significance. A few trends that we saw recently, it all comes back to the keywords that surround the word smart, smart cities, smart consumers, and smart content. Meaning, uh, China today will probably be the most uh, well-connected cities in the world. Uh, I'm not sure whether our esteemed audience here has followed. Uh, over the past 12 to 18 months, there are more cities and provincials in, in China are being connected under the national policies of Internet Plus. And in fact, uh, corporations such as uh, Baidu, uh, Tencent and Alibaba are helping uh, are playing a very important role in, in connecting the last miles of the society. So when everything is connected, you think about mobility, then brings up connectivity. Connectivity actually brings up li liberty. And in that sense, then a demand would become infinity. So demand would happen the way that you wanted it. A supply on, on our side would therefore have to meet up to the, the new pent uh, consumer behaviors in the society. So uh, smart cities, smart consumers, and then we, Facebook and ourselves, we have to worry about smart content that therefore uh, engine the, the so-called uh, the resources that's happening right now in the society. Yeah. 
Maybe because I don't speak uh, Chinese, uh, I have uh, the feeling always when I'm looking at uh, Tencent, at Baidu, I have always the feeling that you are ahead of the Western world. Uh, no, Western Particularly when it comes, for example, when I'm speaking about uh, uh, Tencent, there is a possibility of social and commerce together. Well, which no, is a step ahead of what we are seeing <laughs> in the Western world. Well, David, I know stand that up. you are. <laughs> stand up, stand up, help me. <laughs> See, this guy is taller than me. How can we be ahead in that sense, right? <laughs> uh, I, 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 I think numbers yes, because you have seen on that size. Yeah, that's right. Maybe if you had seen on the other size. Well, well let, let, let me maybe put it in a French context. Uh, um, Victor Hugo says... Don't, don't be politically correct. No, no, I'm not politically correct. You, because you, it's, you know, it, it's not heard in China, so you can be completely open. I would talk to you about Xi Jinping afterwards. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Well, I'm a great friend, a great fan of French literature. Uh, I've watched Le Miserable probably more than 10 times with my family around the world. Uh, Victor Hugo, one of the key words that my friend Jeff shared with me was that uh, there is nothing more powerful than an idea. There's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has arrived. So I think this fits very well in the context of evolutions of China's uh, internet society or evolution. And our industry only have about 20 years of lifespan compared to what the world, the, the, the major uh, 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 matured various types of industries from, from industrial revolutions in the West and until where we are seeing where the world are today. So we only have about 20 years. So in other words, that big idea happened at the right time where uh, the, the market was opening up, where a lot of foreign investment was coming in, where uh, a huge resources of consumers are beginning to realize that their hard-earned capital, their hard-earned money uh, could be utilized in, in uh, improving their lifestyles. And then uh, national policy came in, uh, infrastructures of uh, broadband uh, supported by the government, uh, which is actually playing a huge resource. I I'm holding a Chinese-made mobile phone here, Huawei, and, and, and such smartphones are, are available to 90% of the, of the internet, mobile internet server in China. So that helps a lot in actually uh, kind of a building a, an aggregated society where uh, social ideation and social economy is taking a new life by itself. So going back uh, to you, uh, David, if we look at uh, the current messenger program, uh, how much are you expecting from the developers around the world in order to make it an experience that everyone would like? And how much are you expecting from the advertising agency to contribute to this experience? Well, a lot, actually. A lot depends on uh, having a, a healthy ecosystem of partners, a healthy ecosystem of developers, of creative people who can come up with the new interactions um, when a new platform comes, to, uh, comes of age. Uh, I always like, like to make the comparison of like, when you think about like, the early days of the web or the early days of the apps, uh, there was a lot of opportunities for developers to build new businesses, new experiences, for companies to reinvent themselves, uh, and also for creative companies and advertising agencies to come up with new concepts that drove uh, new customer acquisitions, re-engagement, uh, and a lot more. So I think there's a lot of opportunity. This is definitely not, uh, 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 this is not a play that is going to be uh, subtracting value from the ecosystem. It creates value for everyone. Um, and I think that like from developers, what we're expecting to see is a great deal of innovation. And we've seen it already. It's like we've seen new experiences that couldn't exist in other formats come to Messenger. Like, you know, when I think about the, the airline example or the uh, American Express example or like even new things, like there's a company, a startup uh, that's called Motiface that um, launched that bot the other day where uh, women can actually just send a quick photo from the embedded cam of Messenger um, and it virtually applies all kinds of different makeup uh, on their faces so they can actually pick the right uh, makeup for them. Uh, so those are... Uh, have you seen the experience at uh, the 
de L'Oréal stand. Yeah, no, L'Oréal is actually uh, also a partner, uh, and uh, they're they're building a, a bunch of experiences like this for Messenger, uh, which is very relevant to all of their product lines and all of their brands. Uh, and and this is like the nice thing about those experiences is that they add value to the people using them, and at the same time it shows them new products that they're potentially interested in buying, and that's a combination of utility and advertising, which I think is really, really interesting. Which, uh, by the way, is a link with uh, the previous meeting uh, regarding the end of our mar marketing as we know it, because we have to change the way we are communicating and dealing with the consumer. Uh, going back uh, to China, I, I will certainly cover a lot of uh, the the way the Chinese are innovating with uh, Robin, but I would like to come back to you, SY. Uh, explain to me uh, what is driving innovation in China, because I have the feeling that after having been a little bit, and sorry for the, the word, a copycat, and in many aspects, it was in industry, in uh, transport in every single thing, Chinese have started to copy the Western world, and you are now really not only catching up, but leapfrogging up. And um, what is driving innovation? What is the ecosystem which allows the Chinese to innovate so much? Well, um, that, that, that is actually the, the question that we, we are being asked of uh, in most of the occasions. If, if we were to uh, look at the space of innovations, there are, there are some uh, scholar, global scholar, that are really uh, authoritative in that sense. It, it makes me think of uh, uh, Christian, uh, uh, Clayton Christensen uh, that talks about in innovations at Daily Mail. And of course, uh, the gentleman that, that drove that innovation eventually was to, to, to actually serve the needs of uh, a competitive advantage. And we think about Michael Porter, uh, our professor back in Harvard Business School. Uh, Mr. Porter talked about uh, they, 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 they ought to be a certain types of corridors that exist within a, a ecosystem before innovation uh, could flourish, which is why we, we see back in the valley, uh, we, we, are, we are looking at uh, Mr. 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 President of France yesterday, uh, sharing with us passionately about his dream of turning France into a, a French tech nation, a startup nation. So all those things could be in place, but but one of the key factor that often uh, being missed out is actually ideas doesn't doesn't go uh, doesn't achieve success by itself. It's always the people. So one of the first thing that we saw when we look at uh, the past twenty years. Um, Yes, they are, they are beginning to have a field of Mark Zuckerberg types of the world. Uh, we are very proud that we have Robin with us, uh, Robin from Paitu. We are very proud that we have uh, Pony Ma with us. Uh, and of course, uh, the world knows about Jack Ma, uh, um, uh, more than Jackie Chan, I guess. And uh, what, what, what it basically means is that if we were to use a, 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 what do you call a time machine traveling back 10, 15 years ago, before this gentleman became such a public figure, they were coding days and night. They have such huge passion to try to make a difference. They all started with an, a, a, a dream that the world will one day be different with their contribution. And uh, this is what is important in innovation. And in China, well, going back to Victor Hugo again, is just the right place, the right right time and then with a lot of a Chinese luck and Chinese hard work and Chinese passion. I think that's how it started. Uh, having said that, um, it, well, innovation has to serve a purpose. Uh, the, the types of innovation that impact the most are those that actually create a certain utility, a certain values in, in someone's life. Um, WeChat would be one example. Facebook would certainly be another. I'm a great fan of Facebook, not because David is sitting next to me, but Facebook allowed me to utilize my, my social circle the way I wanted it to be. And a lot of us actually have that eagerness to share. Right, and then, and then I wish if Mark was here today, he would have probably more things to share. And so if, Mark, if, if Pony was here today, he would actually show you that types of passion that you would never see, despite the fact that they're getting older and older. What do you think, Mark? Yeah. No, look, I think, um, I mean, on a completely 
orthogonal. Sorry, David. <laughs> I call you Mark. <laughs> on the completely orthogonal uh, dimension, I think you know the question. No, he, he, never, never will be. He's not Mark Zuckerberg. Never will be. Uh, I realize David, voice. David Marcus. Yeah, he's trying to make a point. Yeah, let, no, let, uh, okay, I, th okay. I, think, I think the word is disrupted. I no, think no, he should make a point while we talk. You know, no, <laughs> this no, is no, the internet. Um, yeah. It's his dream. So, okay. yeah. so uh, um, China has. Be a, serious. Yeah, be I'm serious. trying to be serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you represent Facebook. So, um, you know, the interesting yes, thing to me with China right now is actually not related to messaging, but it's a point that I really want to make because it's striking to me in terms of the innovation that's now happening uh, in China and the creativity. I mean, you, you talked about like, and I'm a great admirer of China and like all of the progress that you like and uh, that you've put forward for the world. And if you look at consumer electronics, the really fascinating thing, I think, um, is to see that people always believed that you know China was manufacturing, but actually not like creating. And now the world has changed. When you look at drones, first world leader in drones, DJI, Chinese company, Xiaomi is building a, a whole range of new products and inventing and creating. And so it, you, you can clearly see that uh, even the China of now is not the China of five years ago, and it's really remarkable to see the creativity that's now happening in the country, right? Thank you. Uh, so, we will make the life a little bit less comfortable. Tell me about the competition, a, a word that you probably don't understand in Chinese, because I guess that you are the only one and there is no competition in China. Oh, actually, uh, <laughs> it's actually not quite true. Uh, companies such as Facebook, companies such as Baidu and ourselves, uh, we, we don't arrive at where we are today uh, if we don't see that the competitions are everywhere. The, the biggest competition is actually fear. Every single day, uh, those dream makers of our company, we, we have a groups of people we call the dream makers. When we wake up, uh, we, we, we worry more about uh, are we losing the love mark? Are we losing the love from our consumer? Because you might think that you don't have a competition. And in fact, in today's world, uh, someone from here somewhere would disrupt the Facebook and the Tencent of the world because they are startup. And these key words that, Maurice, that you mentioned uh, yesterday when you met with President, you talk about unicorns. Let statistics, statistics shows that um, the, the Fortune 500 companies used to take a space of 20 years for them to achieve the, the valuations of $1 billion. But for startup, for unicorns, they averagely only take four years. So our competitions are not known out there, and they are real hardworking uh, uh, young guys that burn uh, midnight oil uh, and, and uh, eat uh, the Chinese styles of McDonald's. And one fine day, they will be the Facebook of the future, and they will be the Tencent of the future. And our hope and our responsibility to the industry is that Tencent has to evolve from where we are today. So as we evolve, whatever things are being done today will be filled by many others. I, I think that's how things are working on today. Yeah. Have you ever thought going outside China and creating a Tencent WeChat in French, in Spanish, in uh, English? Well, um, that, that question, again, I actually ask a lot. People talk about globalization plans of, of uh, uh, Tencent company. Um, again, we, we, we have to put our feet on the ground. We are 18 years old. 18 years old are not even allowed to have a beer in the U.S. So we, <laughs> so we are still young in that sense. Okay. I know French can, eat, can drink. Can, can we ask for a beer for SY because it's what he wants to get? <laughs> so, in other words, we are young. Uh, we, we, we are very prudent and, and at times, perhaps sometimes overly prudent. The ideas about uh, expanding our product and services outside the, the mainland China, um, the, the, strategic, the strategic constructs behind being, do we know the audience in France better than whoever that are actually championing the needs of France? Do we know the audience in the US where Facebook and Google are doing so well in there? Vice versa, uh, any companies were to go into new land, that's a similar challenge people are facing. So I think we have our plans, but uh, we like to be very cautious. 
And on top of that, uh, Maurice, I really love to share with you that uh, within our space of the world, we, we seem to like to think of competitions, not from a zero-sum game perspective. So we look at, uh, if, we, if we find some startups, some unicorns that are doing so well, we would actually like to partner with them. Uh, the, 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 the whole concept about, about social economy will begin to take place. And that's what happened in one of our deals that we happened in, in, in Europe recently. So we partner with people in that sense. Yep. Yes, we have seen recently that you have made a very large acquisition in Europe. So it can happen that Tencent can open its checkbook. You can pay large checks. Checkbook? Yes. People still use checkbook? <laughs> now, I said that you, you have acquired recently. Oh, okay, right. Right. Uh, oh, that, that, that's because uh, I think uh, the companies are very, very well respected within the world of mobile games. Uh, this, the, the, the fact that we have acquired them, but the management team would have the, the total uh, autonomy in managing their passion. We have to let people the space to manage their passion. That's how great blockbuster products will arrive. So the idea is not to go in to say that we are, we are kind of taking over. No, the idea is let's help you, guide you, and you help us, guide us, to see whether whatever things that you are strong at in Europe, the Chinese element could help. And when, when such companies are trying to, trying to actually move into China, uh, today we, Tencent is a billion uh, uh, user-based uh, platform, multi-platform. The games, we, you, you talk about MBA uh, in the US, we stream MBA uh, exclusively uh, in, in China. And when, 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 when we met up with Adam Silver, and when I talked to David Shoemaker, we three of us were so thrilled with the success of MBA in China. MBA has been in China for the past 30 years. And ever since they started partnering with Tencent last year, their franchise grew by more than three times. And the, the game where Kobe was having his final, final uh, moments, we had 10 million people watching MBA games like that while they are on the way to office in the morning because NBA is played at night uh, here and then they watch it in the morning, right? That's great. Uh, D David, Facebook, Messenger, every single step that you are taking is already a global one. Uh, not every single step. Um, and there are reasons for that. Like, so for instance, in the US right now, you can pay each other in Messenger, and this is not something that we've internationalized yet. Um, but it's not because we don't want to. It's just because we need to have the right partnerships in place. Uh, we're a very partnerships-oriented platform. And so as a result, we need to build partnerships sometimes on a country-by-country -country basis. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, uh, our will and definitely our intention is to build a platform globally from uh, day one and every feature we launch. Uh, we, we launch a new version of Messenger every week for iOS, for Android, for desktop. Um, and, uh, and we do that at the scale of our uh, global platform with nearly a billion people and like all of the countries and languages every week. Um, and so the intention is really to have all of the capabilities that we build uh, be global and accessible to both developers, businesses, and, uh, and, and also, of course, the people using the product every day. When will be the first agreement in Europe? The first agreement for? Messenger. Oh, we already have a ton. So like this week, uh, this week alone in France, we announced uh, a lot of new uh, uh, experiences on the Messenger platform in France, uh, whether it's uh, with Meetic, with Cheers, with a bunch of others. Um, and so we do have a lot of uh, partnerships in Europe uh, happening on the platform side of things, and, uh, and we're going to continue actively partnering with a lot of companies. We know that Mark is uh, not only in love of his wife, but he is also lo in love of the Chinese culture. Uh, can we expect one day to see uh, something uh, developing in China for Facebook uh, uh, on a bigger scale than what we, we see currently? Well, I, you know, the mission of Facebook and Mark's dream has always been to make the world more open and connected. So I don't think we perceive boundaries uh, as, you know, we just want to put more connectivity in the world. Um, so it, I guess I, I can't answer that question. 
Uh, I think that you know, when we will have the opportunity to do something in China and in other countries that we can't operate in, we'll most likely take that opportunity uh, because, again, our, 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 our dream and our mission is to make the world more open and connected. When we look at uh, the ecosystem, and we have seen this uh, here at Viva Technology, we see that there is very large corporations, startups, uh, innovators, disruptors, uh, developers, everyone contributing. Um, is, is it something that exists in the same way in China? And how do you incentivize the people to participate in that ecosystem on your side? So, SY. On my side. Well, um, the, the, for, for China to attain uh, such a huge user base uh, over the past three, four years, in fact, um, the, the key drivers are actually mobility. See, mobility is just a, an infrastructure where um, the accessibility via the internet experience are made so much pleas uh, pleasurable by the, uh, by the availability, availability of a broadband, uh, affordable handsets and all. But if you have built all the, the largest uh, speedway or highway in, in a certain land, you need, you need contents you need uh, 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 the willingness of the people to spend, to invest time in that area. And that content curations, um, the entire um, uh, architectures and, and, and um, uh, sub-industries, various industries, are not able to be done by a few companies. So to answer that question, I think we are seeing such a huge uh, mushrooming uh, phenomenon of uh, startups, cultures in China, and uh, in, in very recent years, in, in fact, I think back in year 2011, uh, Tencent um, was one of the key pioneers in the industry that actually uh, promoted the concepts of open system. In other words, um, uh, incubators, uh, we, we, in fact, we invested uh, millions of dollars in, in helping uh, certain cities, certain provincials uh, to actually uh, create a, a whole value chain of innovation, starting from universities uh, down to the, the early adopters of technologies and even down to the, the so-called user-generated content industry. Uh, we actually incentivize uh, people that write, people that uh, circulate, and people that good, do good deeds to the society. On top of that, in year 2014, when Tencent, uh, along with a few others, when we promoted uh, the ideas of Internet Plus to the, to the government, um, we, we were blessed with the, the so-called blessing that uh, the government was very serious about, about uh, uh, so-called uh, driving China towards 2025, where everybody would be connected. So open system and internet plus uh, strategies are two main uh, major catalysts, if you like, that actually make the entire country very uh, st uh, startup uh, friendly in that sense. Well, as far as we're concerned, we, like, we have two different uh, ways of engaging the community. Uh, one is we have a big developer conference every year, F8, where we invite all of our developers not only to come to the Bay Area to San Francisco to Silicon Valley and, and, and uh, learn about uh, the new capabilities. Uh, but also we have multicast and this year for the first time we had hundreds of thousands of people watching live and, uh, and gathering in different cities around the world to actually uh, follow the, 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 the new developments. But we're also trying to innovate um, around how we communicate uh, with the, the developer community, we, we just launched a, a blog this morning, actually, for the Messenger developer community, and we're going to continue building more tools and more programs to help developers and also ecosystem players, those who can help uh, more traditional companies come up with uh, innovations on the platform. So we're going to continue investing heavily and trying to incentivize the system. Good. Uh, SY. You have to know that uh, SY Law has decided to do not carry the torch uh, of the Olympic Games in Brazil, and he has preferred to come to Viva Technology. So I thank him very warmly. SY, what would you like to say? 
to this audience right. in order to convince everyone to spend more on Tencent? <laughs> well, uh, first of all, uh, Maurice, thanks again for your, your, your generous invitation. Uh, well, a torch is a personal, personal uh, recognition, despite the facts given by the Olympics. But then uh, the opportunities to, to interact with the best brains in the world, with David here, with you around. And I also had the opportunities to learn from other uh, great speakers, Eric Smith, Robin is going to be speaking later. Uh, I think no amount of torch uh, would buy it, uh, would, would actually turn me back. Uh, I, th I think that's important, right? Thank now, you. Having said that, now that I've done you that favor, so I think I, I earned the, the, the right to modify your question a little bit. Yeah. So it's not so much about what would I like this audience to think about what they can do with Tencent, but actually it's, it's, it's more about, uh, I, I am assuming that majorities of the audience here are young, uh, ambitious, uh, startup uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, I would like to probably just share some of our experience with you. Uh, we, we love to see you being the next uh, Mark Zuckerberg of the world. We, we long to see you being the next Pony Ma, uh, Robin and uh, Jack Ma of the world. And uh, because when you do that, it basically means you have created such a huge uh, success that hundreds of uh, thousands of people is going to be passionately following your dreams uh, while they make a better living for, their, for themselves and their families, they are also creating a better connected world for all of us, whether it was in China or outside of China. Thank you. Thank you, SY. David, what would you like to say in order that everyone is using Messenger? Well, that's uh, on us to build a really good product that people want to use for, uh, for their everyday life. So it's our responsibility. Um, but we're hard at work. And I just want to double down on what SY said. I think uh, you know, I've been an entrepreneur myself for a long time before uh, being in uh, 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 larger companies. Um, and uh, there's nothing more rewarding than the entrepreneurial journey. So like, I just want to echo what SY has said. Uh, if there are lots of dreamers in the room who are looking after building something that's going to be meaningful for the world, then uh, you know, we'll be happy to work with you on uh, trying to help as much as we possibly can, but certainly encourage you to go and, uh, on the journey because it's, uh, it's a rewarding one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, David. Thank you, SY. Thank they you deserve course. a rose of applause. Thank you. Thank you both. This